Welcome to Lights On Mindful Living Podcast. If you're enjoying this, please rate us five star and share. This is how people find out about us through your rating. I'm your host, Mitra Minesh. I'm a mindfulness storyteller and educator. I teach at UCLA's Semmel Institute School of Neuroscience for Human Behavior Mindful Awareness Research Center. I'm also the founder of InnerMap, an innovative new app where we teach mindfulness through stories, sounds, and practices. I've been the mindful coach to many knowns and unknowns of the world for the past three and a half decades. By the way, I have some exciting news. We have created a new feature in InnerMap where everyday global mindful storytellers can tell their stories so that they can be heard and others can be inspired. So if you or someone you know have a story, a mindful story to tell, we would love to hear it and, if appropriate, to include it in our app. To find out more, please visit innermap.me slash your stories. All of these are one word, innermap.me slash your stories. This episode is the continuation of our talk about imagination from the last week when I talked about how imagination has two main foundation. One is our fearful mind. Two is our passionate and compassionate heart. Both are imagination, but their energies, their intentions, and hence their influences on our lives are different. This week, I want to talk about why some people may shy away from the practice of imagination. I hear it all the time when I suggest it in the class or when I'm with my corporate clients and doing corporate training, workplace training, or even in my private practice when I'm coaching individuals, clients, and families. I like to encourage everyone, communities, workplaces, and hopefully the global community to use the might and the power of imagination to steer their life into the direction and destination of their choice. People have various reasons and excuses to not intentionally walk into the path of imagination. I hear many reasons, but there are three main reasons that I come across frequently in my work. Number one, is that they say, I cannot do it. I'm not the type to imagine, or I'm not good at it. Well, if you can worry about the future, you can imagine, believe me. You know how sometimes you start making up stories of how things may go wrong, and then they feel so real that your whole body starts to behave as if it's happening right here, right now? Well, that's an imagination based on fear. Remember, I talked about it in the last episode. And by the way, if you can dream at night, which we all do, we may not remember it, but we all do dream, then you can imagine. You know, when you wake up and can't tell the difference between dream and the reality of your life, that's imagination. Basically, what I'm saying is that we can all imagine, but we may not have practiced it intentionally. We may not have really been good at it, so-called, but then we assume that we cannot imagine. We can all imagine. We all do imagine. The question is, have we practiced intentional imagination? Number two reason that I hear is that people say, Imagination is not for me. I'm not an artist or a musician or a writer or a filmmaker. Well, I have news for all of you. We are all artists, musicians, writers, and filmmakers. We create the music, the script, and the movie of our lives every day. What are we talking about? 
anything that you see in your physical world, the cars, the tools, the designs, the buildings, the apps, they all were one day just an idea, an imagined idea in someone's mind. And then they became a reality. Everything was one day a no thing, not a nothing, but a no thing, meaning a thing that is not in existence yet. And then it became a thing. So everybody can and does imagine. Number three reason is that I hear, well, imagination is not real. I want to live in a real life. I'm realistic. Okay, true. Imagination is not real, but imagination is a prerequisite for real. Imagination is what makes real real. Does that make sense? That's that's what real is. Real becomes real when it has been imagined. Again, imagined on autopilot by our fearful thoughts or imagined intentionally by our compassionate and our passionate heart. I hear, I, I read somewhere, I'm not sure where, that Leonardo da Vinci, Thomas Edison, and Charlie Chaplin were all considered and known to be daydreamers. Okay, what is daydreaming? Daydreaming is imagination and visualization of a vision, isn't it? So imagination has much to do with reality. It shapes the way we see our reality. It is what creates our reality and therefore affects our expectations, our hopes, and directs our actions. Imagination is like a software that programs our behavior, and that's why it's important that we develop this program with awareness, presence, curiosity, and compassion. So if we can all imagine, and if we all do imagine, if imagination is part of our life, and it is how we make our realities, then the question I would like to leave you with is, what are you imagining these days? Are you making reality through your fearful thoughts? Or you're making your realities through your passionate hearts? And by the way, the answer to this question is very easy. Look at your life, and there it is. If you're mainly worried, anxious, sad, and in survival mode, no matter how so-called successful the world sees you, then your frightened mind is the creator of your imagination. Mainly. I mean, none of these are 100%. We're never 100% creating intentionally or 100% creating not intentionally. But mainly, what is the main theme of your life? So I'm going to repeat the question one more time before I love you and leave you. And that is, are you making your reality through your fearful thoughts or your passionate hearts? Join me in the next episode where we will explore this important topic further. I'm grateful for your presence and your journey. Hope this episode answered the question or two for you or provoked and inspired questions in you. I'm so grateful you showed up and listened up. Until the next time, be well and stay curious.